Yes, guys, and welcome to Flat Cap Euro Talk. This time it is yet again another scout report, and it is going to be Stefan DeVray, which I did just look up how to pronounce correctly this time. I was saying DeVray earlier. It actually is DeVray. So all the Dutch internationals, maybe anybody that is familiar with the Dutch language at all, do let me know if I am still maybe getting it wrong there. But I am very much looking forward to this one because this is someone that we're apparently very heavily rumored with as a center back that Antonio Conte wants. So without further ado, let's crack into it, everybody. Hopefully you're going to enjoy this one. We are going to do a bit of a highlight reaction as always. But Stefan DeVray was born, in fact, in a very small town uh, in the Netherlands. In fact, it was actually... uh, um, again, apologies for the butcher here, but Odekirk on den Isel or Odekirk on den uh, Isel, maybe uh, in the Netherlands, a, a very small town uh, in the Netherlands. Everybody, uh, he's around 29 years old. Uh, he, his position is just mainly a center back, pretty much just plays a center back, kind of plays actually, in fact, a bit of a libero role, you might say, actually, in that center back. I believe every time he's played uh, for Inter Milan, he plays preferably in the middle of that back three, which is a very crucial position. Uh, It actually involves someone who has to need to read the game well, has to be able to, you know, also be a good ball playing center back at the same time. Uh, His height is around 1.89 meters, six feet, two inches uh, as well. So he is actually decently tall. I would say that he's not the most physical of or industrious of center backs. That must be said. Uh, His youth career, he was a fine Nord man. You know, there are plenty of, you know, Dutch teams that people are loyal to. He's not an Ajax guy. He's not a PSV guy. He's not an AZ Alkmaar guy. He is a Feyenoord man. Uh, but originally then, though, he did go to Lazio, which is where I think a lot of people probably started to pick up on him in around 2014 through 2018. Then he made his big move over to Inter from uh, until now. And supposedly this is the guy that everybody that Antonio Conte wants. So this is the guy that I would also want then as well. If Antonio Conte wants him, then I definitely trust Antonio Conte's uh uh, position then uh, originally i thought he's a decent center back i thought he's a pretty good center back especially in back three especially in the Serie A. he's very very good can he make that move or step up to the premier league i'm not so convinced but maybe we'll find out in this highlight reaction everybody his market value is around 45 million pounds though which does suggest though that does suggest he's actually very highly rated on transfer mark his transfer mark value is around 45 million pounds and his agent is mino raiola the very famous very infamous mino raiola everybody but Let's move on to this one uh, for it. Uh, but his attributes do include, uh, he. I think he's a ball playing center back. I think that you'll find that out in the highlight reels. He has an eye for a pass. He plays it on the floor plenty often. He's got composure, everybody. This guy has composure. I mean, he's just the coolest head in the building sometimes. Generally, he's just the calmest head in the building. He's an excellent reader of the game as well. Like really... He doesn't commit many many fouls because he doesn't need to when it kind of looks like it when you watch the highlights. He genuinely just like he'll see what mistake, you know, the player will make in front of him. We'll see what mistouch or miscontrol or something that the player will make and he'll and he'll read it well. He's actually got an excellent eye for the game. He's a brilliant ball carrier. The guy's got a bit more tactics than maybe I ever realized or anybody else ever gave him credit for. And he loves to play it on the floor. Like I said, he can ping a pass if he needs to. But he prefers to play it on the floor. And I think that's also an uh, excellent sign of a good player there. Let's just take a look at his stats, though, quickly from 2020 uh, and 2021 season. Uh, for progressive carrying distance, this is his ball carrying ability. He carried it around 174 yards every single match. Uh, and that ranked him in the 92nd, percent, 92nd percentile amongst all center backs in the Serie A. This comparing him to all center backs in the Serie A, everybody. Uh, as well, uh, he had around 0.23 people uh, dribbled past in the Serie A as well, and that ranked him in the 97 percentile. Which again, that's not many two people, not many people dribble past for a 90, but for a center back, that is actually quite impressive when you think about it. That is around you know at least every five games he's going to skin a guy, which is kind of funny and quite impressive. His ground passes he is in the 90th percentile as well. He plays around 54 a game, which I think is honestly unbelievable as well. Love that he just prefers to play on the floor. floor prefers to play it simple you might say um but his pass is intercepted as well that means these are passes that he plays actually that are in, that are intercepted and he only has about 0.3 per 90 that are intercepted so that basically means like every three or four games he has a pass that's intercepted which is basically just showing that composure that we were talking about his pass completions uh, percentage is around 94.6 percent so again guy knows how to play a dime like i'm not kidding 
The guy knows how to play dime. He's honestly a beautiful boy on the ball. He's a beautiful man on the ball with that 97th percentile ranking as well. I mean, Jesus, the guy's got an excellent pass uh, ranking percentage and fouls committee. He doesn't commit very many fouls. And I think that's something I'm a bit hesitant about, though. You kind of read that both ways. Like he's maybe not aggressive enough for the Premier League, but that just shows that he maybe also reads the game quite well when you think about it. Uh, but he only commits about 0.76 fouls per 90 which puts him in the 94th percentile, which basically just means he's a good boy. He's not a naughty boy. He's a good boy when you think about it in that, in terms of those, uh, in terms of that sort of way. But let's crack into the highlights here, everybody. This one's coming from Total Football, everybody. And I do really rate this, you know, video. I think this is a great one. And always, as always, it will be in the uh, description down below if you want to check out the real full video yourself here. But we are going to see, you know, <laughs> as much as, you know, showing a bit of the, uh, the the animation there, you know, a bit of the, the intensity there. We can see how much of a good reader of the game he is. He's a fantastic reader of the game. He waits for his defender, or sorry, excuse me, his attacker to make a mistake. He waits for that attacker to make him a mistake. Getting stuck in there, of course, and then plays a beautiful pass here. This is one. These are the moments, everybody. These are the moments that you must look at. Actually, oh, that's a brilliant touch right there. This is what I'm saying is everybody, his ball carrying it built in again, the skills on display. He's the coolest head in the building. He's honestly the most composed man in the building sometimes the way he does this, everybody. I really will say that, and I can't stress that enough. The guy just, he's the example of composure. He is the example of composure. And he will be playing, as you can tell, everybody, he plays in that middle of the back three, which does mean he needs to be sometimes the aggressor as well as the last man back and being able to read the game in front of him. This is basically what Christian Romero does. But Christian Romero, though, sometimes can get a bit ahead of himself, like can get a bit too crazy when it comes to reading the game in front of him. I still would probably prefer Christian Romero in that center just for me, especially when it comes to the Premier League. But at the same time, that libero role, it's asking for someone like Stefan DeVry sometime who can kind of do a bit of both, who can kind of do it all, I would say. Uh, and I think you can definitely see that with the guy. You know, certainly he has the composure, he has the ability to read the game, and he has the ability to carry the ball out of the back which with absolute ease. And also look at this pinging ability right there. It just plays it to Lautaro Martinez, who has to finish that. I mean, you genuinely have to finish that. And look at this, he plays it into Lukaku getting an assist there as well. I mean, if, I think the Serie A, though, at the end of the day, is very different from the Premier League. Will it be able to have some of these, you know, passes into strikers like that? Maybe not so. But at the same time, like I will say, his composure and his ball playing ability is uh, it's it's unbelievable. That's a very lucky goal and deflection, but at the same time. Still goes towards him, everybody. Still goes towards him. Still an assist. Look at the composure here. Look at that composure, everybody. Look at that composure the guy has genuinely. He doesn't need the strength as well, actually. What I find funny, he's not like a robust or industrious defender at all. He doesn't need the strength. He doesn't he just waits for them to make a mistake. Look at how he reads this right here. He doesn't need them to like, doesn't need to bully them. He just waits for them to make a mistake. Just and this is where I'm a bit worried, though, like in the Premier League, like, will that be the case with someone like Wilfred Zaha or something running at him? Will that be the case with St. Maxman? Maybe not. But then again, he'll just pick his moment. Maybe he might pick his moment for them to make a mistake or pick his moment for him to win the ball off of them. And then that's what maybe we can rely on. He is 29 years old, which means he's practically in his prime right now, uh, if not, maybe only for a couple more years. So I just... Uh, if Antonio Conte rates him, I think we should certainly take him in, especially if he trusts the guy. I think we should take him in. I prefer Skriniar. I prefer Skriniar. But if this is who he's going after, and maybe for a cut price as well, I think it would make sense. But my problem with him is that he just seems to be more of a Serie A kind of center back. He seems to be more of kind of like, you know, kind of a low energy kind of full uh, center back. But that doesn't mean he's not a bad center back. That just means generally he's just made for a more technical league, which is the Serie A. The Serie A relies on your technical ability. It's more like how you read the game in the Serie A. It's not about like how industrious and how like bullish you are and things like that, if you know what I mean. But then again, no, look at these moments. Like, does he really, this maybe come, see, this is what I'm saying though. Does it really come through here though? Like sometimes we see Romero, like Romero will put in some nasty tackles into people. And it's like with Stefan DeVry or Stefan DeVry, 
sorry, excuse me. I keep pronouncing his name wrong, but it's Stefan DeVray. Like, he doesn't need to commit a foul in some of these scenarios. He just reads the game. That's all it is. And look at that right there with the hands behind the back. Just reads it perfectly there. So I would just say, like, maybe I could give this guy a chance. Maybe I could give this guy a chance. But the reason I'm doing this scout report is because we've been heavily rumored with him if we've potentially, what it seems like is that we're on bro, so I'm practically signing him at this rate. So that's why I'm doing this scout report right now, just to give you guys the heads up on somebody that we are absolutely going after. His aerial ability, I will say, he wins a lot of aerial duels, but he doesn't lose. He still loses a few fear as well. Like it's kind of, it's not like Ben White percentages. Look, let's let's get us right. But like, you know, Ben White who loses a lot of aerial duels, but he doesn't necessarily win like so many. So it, it it's a bit of a confusing one. Like it, it's a bit of a confusing one. I wouldn't necessarily say his aerial duel ability is fantastic, but it's not horrible either. So. Again, you can tell that I'm not totally excited by this guy. You can tell that I'm not totally excited by everything that he's, you know, maybe potentially can bring. Uh, but at the same time, I'd like to think that, you know, he, like I said, and I couldn't stress this enough, everybody, he brings the composure, he brings that coolness, brings that classiness into the building. And anybody that plays in the center of a back three, by the way, anybody that plays that libero role, you have to be good especially under Antonio Conte's system. You have to be good. But I will say the best thing about him is, which we probably don't have apart from Romero, is that ball carrying ability, is that ability to play a ball on the floor that isn't a hospital pass. We see with Eric Dyer, Joe Rodon, I will admit, even Jaffa at Tanganga, the guys, you know, they play hospital passes the whole match. Like they genuinely do, where Stefan DeVries, and uh, Stefan de Vrij, he will be able to play a pass that is perfectly timed, perfectly weighted, perfectly put into somebody's feet when someone like Eric Dyer will just be an absolute hospital pass. He's able to hold off slats on there, which definitely is impressive. Seems like he doesn't even need to jump for some of these headers, which maybe just maybe his strength is a bit more underrated than I realized. But again, like it is the Premier League, like he's going to be coming up against guys like Chris Wood, I will admit. So I am a bit worried about maybe how can he really handle, you know, I think it, <laughs> this is my thing. I don't ever I don't really rate Eric Dyer's uh, heading ability. I don't really rate his aerial dual ability. And we kind of talk about Eric Dyer as like a ball playing center back. So <laughs> like if I had to pick between Stefan DeVray and Eric Dyer's ball playing center backs that maybe probably sacrifice some of that ball playing ability for maybe not being so fantastic in the air. I would certainly take Tef Stefan DeVray over Eric Dyer any day of the week. I must confess that. This is where that comes through, though, that reading of the game, everybody. And this is where that comes through. And the coolest. He doesn't need pace. He doesn't need, you know, athleticism. He just, he's just classy, everybody. Like, I think you can all tell that. He's just simply classy the way that he goes about it. Some of these back headers are a bit questionable. I will admit, like, you know, honest reviews, everybody. It's always honest reviews. But at the libero role, as you can tell, in the center of the back three, you need to choose when to be aggressive. You need to choose when to push yourself forward. You need to choose when to win the ball back. And I will say, like, at least in his case, like, when he wins the ball back, he's not going to lose it, like, because he's simply that classy. He's simply that classy. Maybe this is why, uh, you know, Antonio Conte rates him so highly. I 
there we are everybody again total football is where you can check that out total football is where you'll be able to find this video uh hopefully you enjoyed this scout report hopefully you enjoyed uh stefan devries uh ability i certainly do i think he will provide a bit of that calmness a bit of composure that maybe we haven't seen with eric dyer or any other center backs i think that's the only reason why eric dyer even get selected at this rate anymore because he offers that bit of composure you know which i think is shouldn't really be a highly rated you know attribute but at the end of the day we don't really have many center backs in their club that certainly can offer that so with stefan devray i would say everybody the reason i think we're getting him is because when we are playing a back three we need someone that can carry it out the back we need someone that can be a great ball carrier but we also need someone that can also be able to uh how do you say this like you know <laughs> uh, just be able to be composed Generally, I can't stress that enough, and I don't think we have that at the moment. But that'll be all for now. This is Flat Cap Bureau Talk, and we will be coming out with more scout reports. They'll be coming out with the Pedro Conchalves scout report very soon. Obviously, the front Kessier is already being released. Please check that out, of course, as well. Uh, and that plenty of others that maybe we've missed out on. Dushan Blavich has been done a way long time ago, which is a guy that we know we're probably going after as well. Uh, but without further ado, please like. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell to never miss another scout report like this one. And I'll be seeing you.